Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be continuing our Kubernetes streak and we will be setting up GitLab in Kubernetes, which I have loved so far. Um, after you get you know through all the like things that you gotta edit and everything, um, after that, it's amazing. Um, especially how it does the runners and everything. It's actually all built into the Helm chart, so you don't have to create your own separate runner. It kind of just works. Um, so that's what I'll be showing you how you can do today. Um, and we will actually be doing a self-signed cert that we will be using from our Steph CA server too as well. Um, so if you have your like cert manager or like traffic that's handling the certs, that's great. But if you're doing self-signed certs in your home lab, um, hopefully this helps because it took me a little bit to get this working. So, <clears throat> all right, let's get started. All right, so first off, we have our um, Kubernetes, you know, master server, but there will be a few prereqs that really you don't actually know until you kind of start creating it. So the first prereq um, that you will need is essentially your DNS. So this Helm chart that we'll be using from GitLab essentially, it will actually create a few services with the following um, DNS entries that you'll need. So you'll have GitLab um, and dot your domain, KES for dot your domain, minio dot your domain, and then registry uh, dot your domain. Um, that essentially are the four uh, DNS entries that you need. Um, if you don't have it, some of it obviously may not work. Um, there might be fields in the values.yaml to change it so that it's like you can do like GitLab something else or minio something else. Um, but if you don't change those, I don't actually even know where they're at. But if you kind of don't change those, these are the four defaults that we'll expect to be populated so that you can use. Um, and you can see that I uh, have it all the same IP, which is pointing to my uh, metal LB load balancer that has traffic right behind that. So, but once you have those four DNS entries in your home lab, it's pretty, pretty good at that point. So the first thing that we'll want to do is obviously add the Helm repo for GitLab, which will be from the charts.gitlab.io. So, um, oh, I, I, I have that added. So it's already there. Um, but what we'll do is do a Helm pull GitLab, GitLab untar real quick. So this will pull down the, the Helm chart and all the things in it. So we can change directory to GitLab. And we can see essentially all the files that you would possibly need to uh, use. Um, but really, we'll only be editing the values.yaml in this case. So technically, you don't have to download the Helm chart. I like downloading it just to kind of see what it has um, and in case you do too. So with Kubernetes, you would obviously start with creating the namespace that you'll put it in. So we'll just create a namespace called GitLab. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit fancy. Okay, so um, if you are using a self-signed cert, so I put my self-signed cert in the search directory. So what I have here is essentially the the cert, uh, the cert, the key, and and the CA cert. So what GitLab will expect is essentially um, your full, you know, C CA cert plus your whatever cert that you have here and name it whatever the domain is. So what I essentially did was cat, you know, CA cert, um, the wildcard cert. So you have the CA, which is the root and the intermediate, plus your actual wildcard cert um, in here, dot cert. And then I just outputted this to my GitLab, dragon.local.cert, which is what GitLab is expecting. So what we'll do here um, is once you have that squared away, what you can do is do a kubectl create secret generic, and we'll just call it dragon local cert in this case. Uh, we'll put it in the GitLab namespace and we will name it from the file GitLab dragon.local.cert. Um, so specifically, again, the name, um, because I tried this a few different ways, but apparently you have to have it with the name of your domain and we'll create that secret. So now that secret is created. Um, so from there, we can go back to GitLab GitLab, and we'll update the values.yaml file, values.yaml. And there are essentially a few things that you will want to edit. So we'll take a look real quick. So it will download the 17.10.3 version. Um, I believe 17.11 is out already, but we'll just do 17.10.3, it's fine. Um, then what we'll do is there should be host domain right here. And we will update this domain to be our dragon.local. So the thing is, this is your domain. So this is what it would be in all, in front of all those DNS entries. So like the gitlab.dragon.loco, the cas.dragon.loco. You don't want to put gitlab in here because then it'll be gitlab.gitlab.dragon.loco. If 
Fun fact, I made that mistake. <laughs> um, so you just want the domain in there. Um, and then what I have essentially um, as well is uh, I'm going to just use my tr my traffic to front it. So uh, you can run it without traffic and it'll just use Nginx and you don't have to even create a cert, it'll create its own cert. But because I have my self-signed cert and I already have traffic set up, um, I just want to route everything to traffic. So we all set the ingress configure cert manager to be false here because we have our self-signed cert. Um, we'll add the class in here and it will be uh, traffic. We'll add the annotations as well. So we want to add the Kubernetes. I hope I spelled that right. Ingress class to be traffic as well as the traffic ingress kubernetes.io router TLS uh, set to true because there will be TLS. Um, want that to be enabled. Then you want to actually set up the TLS as well. Um, so in this case, we want to make sure that this is enabled. Um, and then the secret name. So the secret name is what we had um, earlier. So it what we called it was dragon local cert. Um, so that's what it will use for the, you know, domain when you go to gitlab.dragon.local. It will use this up. Um, and that's pretty much it that you need to set up here. Um, but we'll also need to turn off the engine X ingress. Um, because we aren't using that anymore and we're using the traffic. So we'll set this as false. But again, if you don't have, you know, traffic configured or any of that, and you just want to use the default engine X that comes with it, you can just leave that as enabled. Um, and then the last thing, and this this is what took me probably the longest, honestly, um, is the GitLab runner uh, configuration here. Um, so the problem with the GitLab runner is essentially because you're using a self-signed cert, it'll try to register the GitLab runner plus what it's running um, as a, um, essentially, hey, it's HTTPS and it will fail because it doesn't trust the cert because it's a self-signed cert. So what we'll do here is add another field, cert's secret name, um, yes. And then add dragon local cert as well. Um, that way it will essentially populate and trust that cert on the GitLab runner so that when you know it reg the GitLab runner registers or when the runner run jobs um, that requires you know uploading to a registry, it works. So essentially that's, should be for the most part what you need for setting up the values.yaml with a self-signed cert and doing traffic. So we'll see if it actually works. So we'll do a home uh, install GitLab dot um, and then do n for namespace and GitLab. So this will essentially provision, you know, all everything that needs the de de deployment create the pods. Um, and trust me, there's a lot of pods that it, it creates, which is kind of like, does it kind of, half a a h a which is kind of actually really cool um so like upgrading gitlab with kubernetes is pretty seamless because you can just change the version and then it will you know spin up a new pod and then essentially pass traffic to the new pod after and terminate the old pods so you really have a very small blip if anything that you can tell um while this runs, which is really cool. So technically, um, if you want to do GitLab HA, as you've seen in like my previous uh, GitLab HA video, it's like 30 VMs and, and all that. Um, and it is like way too much for home lab. Um, GitLab and Kubernetes kind of just pr pretty much does GitLab HA in a very smaller um, form, which is great for what I need to do. So. Um, so this might take a few seconds to minutes, depending on um, what it does. So it actually needs to create like volumes and whatnot. Oh, so it will also create a few volumes. So that's the other thing in here um, is essentially there will be volumes that need to be created. Um, and the creation I have is with Longhorn. So my volumes will be done via Longhorn insufficient storage. So apparently I just don't have enough storage. Um, so that's probably why it's actually taking a little bit longer. Um, so let me go fix that real quick and then uh, we'll come back. All right. So I ended up deleting my Uptime Kuma volume in there because I'm not going to be using Uptime Kuma um, in my in my uh, YouTube lab essentially. Um, but I probably won't need to expand after GitLab here now that I pretty much maxed out uh, things. But you can see here that once it is 
good with the volumes. Um, so that's that's another thing. Like if you don't have a volume manager um, for your Kubernetes cluster, um, I would recommend Longhorn, and you can check out my Longhorn video, which is pretty simple. Um, that makes volume provisioning so much easier. Um, let's put it that way. Um, but you can see here with GitLab, it essentially runs, deploys, and should be ready. So we, what we can do is kubectl get pods and GitLab. So we can see, and we will zoom out just a little bit because it does look a little bit nicer, um, that we got a lot of things going on. Um, but for the most part, everything is running and or completed, um, which is what you want to expect for your lab. So what we can do here is actually go to the browser and go to gitlab.dragon.local. You'll just give a prompt for your uh, username. And in here, what we would have to actually do, and I'm going to copy and paste this because uh, it does some JSON stuff too as well. Um, so we'll grab the secret that is GitLab, GitLab initial root password um, in the GitLab namespace. And then we'll do some JSON path parsing for the data password that is basically for encoded, so we decode it. Um, so we'll run that. So this should be the root password here. So let's copy and paste that in here. And we can see here that it is now, um, yeah, we'll acknowledge that. Um, you are now running GitLab uh, in Kubernetes. So we can see admin area real quick. We can see that um, we're running the 17.10.3 version down here, um, which you might not be able to see because my face is covering it, but 17.10.3 right there. Um, and then the other important part is making sure your runners are actually working. So you can see that the GitLab runner is online. So if, if it wasn't working, it would have failed to register and it wouldn't show up here um, with the self-signed cert, um, but it does and it shows up. So essentially everything is running in a good state you can log into gitlab it's actually pretty snappy especially when you have have enough you know um cpu memory with it um but that's pretty much it so you can get your gitlab set up in kubernetes um and start your projects here so that's pretty much it for this video so if you did enjoy this video please leave me a like comment subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video bye